Welcome to episode 72 of Nobody Special. In this episode, we talk about the Women's World Cup and the pay gap and comparison. The Gospel Outpost presents Nobody Special. Hey everyone, welcome to Nobody Special, two nobodies talking about the somebody who matters. I'm Danny, the man bribing FIFA and host mm. of Nobody Special. And I'm Caleb, your other host of Nobody Special. This is a podcast where two generations of people talk about God, pop culture, politics, and everything in between, all while not taking any of it too seriously. Welcome to the show, Danny. Welcome to the show, Caleb. Yes. You're uh, both welcomed to the show. We're both welcomed. This has been a crazy week of news a, yes, a ton of it i don't want to cover i don't yeah. um the whole epstein child solicitation thing involving basically every i don't even know what that is oh yeah man stuff's messed up <laughs> stuff has um, been me- i i had a nightmare the other night about ted bundy and he was like he was doing his his shtick in front of <laughs> like in front of me. His shtick? I was like witnessing it. Is Ted Bundy a comedian now? Like he's <laughs> no, doing his no his soft five. I'm, like what are you I'm doing? Saying, like, hey everyone, it's good to see you. <laughs> I'm trying to say I the polite you. way of his uh his process of doing things and I saw all of it and it was really traumatizing. And I when remember was waking this? Last night. This is last night? Yeah. Is this because of the Funhouse guy? I think it was. It's because the Funhouse guy that you think <laughs> lo- looks like Ted Bundy. Looks like Ted Bundy and is actually an Emmy <laughs> Award winning editor that is way better it than anything Rooster Teeth. It got in my head so much that I had a nightmare about Ted Bundy. That's kind of, it was, it's weird. Well, that's, I think part of it how is work. <laughs> we saw that and then played an hour and a half game of Dice Throne, which is basically, l- 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 well, it's us slowly trying to kill each yeah. other in the character. Yeah. And a true. little bit not in the character, which is how we play board games. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go on the record at this point as saying we will not play Monopoly. Whatever. No. You know, I, I actually enjoy Monopoly. No, I understand absolutely not. it's like the rainbow road of board games. It ruins friendships. But, you know, I enjoy it. I have the Stranger Things edition. and That uh, one I might it's play. It's pretty good. Yeah, right? But. Right? But. It makes, ten, but, it makes it ten times better. If it gets a little heated. Ethan Snyder got it for me. Shout out. If it gets a little heated, I may take that board to the upside down. Throw it across the room. I might... I, it w- missed opportunity. I may flip that board upside down. Take it to the upside down. I said upside down. I got the thrust no, of the I joke. Know. <laughs> but it didn't make any sense. It's all right, though. I'm just going to critique you and your jokes while I have nightmares about Ted Bundy. I will ruin season three for you. Hey, <laughs> I finally... F- here's... All right, so current... In, well, all right, so I'll get into this, and then... We can get into our actual story, but right. currently at this point, Caleb and I have a ceasefire on many things because uh, I have finished season three mm-hmm. of Stranger Things, and you, I'm one episode away, have gone to Spider Man. Uh, so yeah. that's pretty true. We have this also, OK Corral standoff. Nope, nope. I've been good. Whatever you're about to no, say for this show. No, I was about show. to say, it's no, an no. amazing movie okay. that everyone needs to watch. And for some reason, it Thin really hit Zamboni. home with me. And I really just loved every bit of it. And I want to yeah. see it again. I don't often want to see movies twice, especially since I'm on like financial budget right now. But straight up. I'm on a fixed income. <laughs> <laughs> what? Sorry. <laughs> it's a common older person. But you continue. We are in a... A ceasefire. What is that? As in, we don't fire. We cease firing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because if I tell him that at the end of season three, Eleven kills Dumbledore, I really wish I couldn't have screwed that up. But um, (laughs) But she did. I really did. She is in everything at this point. It's really kind of... She's Mm -hmm. in... And she... Emily Emily Bobby Brown, I'm going to say it. She's okay. She's fine. I'd say she's good. It's just odd. 
I mean, we really haven't seen her play any other character. Because in the Godzilla... She was in Godzilla. Same character. Yeah. I mean, like, that's what it looks like to me. It was like... Not the same character, but I'm saying acting wise. It's, you're no, a, it's a, the same character. You're a kid who is. She takes on Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> takes on Godzilla. Godzilla's a good guy. What are you talking about? Yeah. So that, she's the that villain of the just, whole yeah. movie. She oh is Mothra. Gosh. That's Spoilers. crazy. Spoilers for Godzilla, everyone. Sorry if you haven't seen it. But. <laughs> it's actually a Stranger Things crossover. We didn't know mm-hmm. it until now, but yeah. it is. It's crazy. I would pay to not see that movie. No, I didn't pay to see that movie. So I, yeah, I didn't. Oh, I oh don't, you would pay to not. I'd see pay it. to not see. Oh, it. I see. Yeah, that's funny. This is great. So, what are we talking about today, Danny? Caleb, no, 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 no. <laughs> Other way, Caleb. What are we talking about today? <laughs> Danny super doesn't want to be talking about this. It's fine. I kind of forced him to because I was in a bad mood because I had a long day of work, and I'm tired. But you know, I don't know where you're going with this or how to make this funny. Oh, I'm not. Um, I'm just being honest with you guys because well, Caleb, this I is, accept your apology. <laughs> it wasn't an apology. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are talking about the women's FIFA World Cup pay gap, and uh, and Danny doesn't. That is really loud. It actually Man. was a lot louder than I thought it was going to be. And I'm really sorry for that, and I apologize. <laughs> But yeah, Danny didn't want to be talking about it. It's fine though. I mean, it's not okay. Hold on. All right. See, because here's what here's. It's not that I don't want to talk about it. It's that this is just it's a it's a a minefield of conversation that I wasn't too excited to just stray on yeah. out into. Right. Because I mean, how do I say no? I'm okay with the fact well, that they're paid less. See, because that's the sound bite. If if someone takes away, actually, I shouldn't have even said that sentence because if someone clips this, it's just I'm okay that they're paid less, and I just said it again. I've given people multiple opportunities now to take this clip so severely out of context. No, 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 no. I'm gonna make a fake like ad against Danny. No, but and how he doesn't support uh, women's rights. Uh, no, but it's here's be great. All right, the other deal is you can't tell people on the internet to do it because then they'll do Danny it. Danny Burton of Nobody Special. But you can't tell them to not do it because then they'll do it. Does not Thanks, support internet. women in their pay gaps. No. All right, so give us the background of the story. Okay, so, background of the I story. weep. This is soccer. We all love soccer. Well, not everyone, but I like soccer. You may, might like soccer, um, especially our UK friend. But uh, I don't know. I, I'm generalizing there, and I'm sorry. <laughs> but... This Racist. is about the Women's Sorry. World Cup, which is – World Cup is a big thing for both, you know, men and women, but it's more so for men, obviously, because that's that's how – Right. This is starting right. off real bad. That's just how things go, uh, especially – I mean, it's just statistically well, no, with viewers. Wait, yeah. This is <laughs> instead of saying that's just how things no, I go. Know. That's not what I was trying to say. <laughs> let's clarify that there's data to support the right. amount of revenue People that men view, and women's. There are a lot more views and a lot more revenue. This is a, a big point. There's a lot more views of the men's World Cup and revenue around that, and mm-hmm. that goes into the actual. Um, the pocket for how much the winner will make, um, and just you know, because of you know, that's how it works. You get more views, you get paid more. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a bit more nuanced than that. I mean, you know, there's aspects of that, but overall, that's the general principle. And why this is coming up at this point is because the United States women's national team uh, from the best country in the world. Sorry to our British friend. And other friends. I don't know. If Mainly him because of the whole tea incident. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, drink your tea. I'm like, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's smack talking right there. I don't know. Um, but they won. They got first. They got mm-hmm. the World Cup. And um, immediately, <laughs> that sounds like someone who has never watched soccer. Dan is no, I, all right. They I, got the World I, Cup. I enjoy more soccer. I enjoy watching it. <laughs> Had no idea the uh, women's World Cup was going on. Um, uh, but it it all stems on the controversy of this one particular player that uh, is kind of kicking everything off. Had kind of uh, took a knee during the national anthem. 
I denied trips to the White House because Orange Man bad. <laughs> I mean, that's the summary of that, right? I'm sorry. Am I summarizing that correctly? Orange is the new black. Orange Man bad. Is that the Netflix show? Uh, yes, okay. because they're in. I don't know why the movies. Um, yeah, yeah. And and so in coming back, they kind of decided, or or not they, mainly Megan Rapinoe decided to address the issue of the pay gap between men and women. Okay. <laughs> and we're here in this this debate again. So this is a very obviously tedious subject because. Um, I would say as Christians, we should believe in equality among everyone. I mean, because that's yeah, that's how Jesus rolls, right? And God rolls. I mean, because right. that's it's uh because Jesus has extended His hand and given us grace. Mm-hmm. Um, we are now called to give grace to everyone, and that's super important. The word everyone mm-hmm. means everyone. Means everyone. So, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if, uh, if Put he didn't that know. on a t-shirt on that one. <laughs> but I think partially it kind of stems it kind of stems back to the image of God, that men aren't created more in the image of God than women. Right. Minorities aren't created less in, in the image of God. And, I mean, to be open and fair, there are times that even the, the church has horribly screwed that up as far as the mm-hmm. a minorities thing. That oh, they've treated sure. um, African Americans as if they aren't created in the image of God. And if there's a proper understanding of the image of God and how it applies to people, then a fair amount of stuff does tend to take care of itself. Right. As in, I shouldn't murder a person created in the image of God because they're created in the image of God. Right. You don't really have to go much further than that. That's kind of a big deal there. And basically, this is, I mean, there's tons of things that go into this. So let's, let's, let's dive into it. But we just kind of wanted to say that because mm-hmm. we do believe that equality Absolutely. is what God wants. If like, there is an actual inequality going on, then it needs to be fixed. Right. And, and to be fair, there are people that are very sexist. I'm not going to claim yeah. that isn't a thing also. And I'm also going to claim that some of them claim to be Christians. Um, and, and that is a thing that's a form of, of a bigotry that isn't acceptable in Christian theology. It's inappropriate. Right. However... I mean, I wouldn't say that they're claiming to be Christians. They can be Christian and, you know, still have that issue. Right. I mean, they are claiming to be Christians. uh, Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm leaving myself an out. (laughs) But, I mean, basically, what's going on here is a lot of things. So, there's multiple layers to this. Let's dive into them. So... There is the FIFA. Um, FIFA is the one who organizes these World Cups for both mm-hmm. uh, men and women, mm-hmm. and and they have tended to be. Correct me if I'm wrong. An upstanding organization that doesn't have a history of any kind of scandal or bribery yeah. whatsoever. Qatar 2022 or whatever. Where is it? I don't isn't know. it going to a place that doesn't even have a soccer team but has plenty of oil fields and has a lot of money? And at some point, the guy. I is his name I think I think his name is Bladder, is that right? I have no idea. Didn't he straight up say at a point, no, yeah, we took a bribe for that one. Yeah. But we're an independent organization, so what are you gonna do? Yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Like he straight up said something to the effect of, Yeah, they offered us a lot of money. Right. I have something in my eye and it's really bothering me. I'm That's just okay. Gonna, <laughs> I'm literally half of yeah. his eye is blurry. But moving I on. No, FIFA has I mean, they've had their problems. Um So, you know, this isn't to say FIFA is this upstanding organization that gets everything spot on uh, the first time. And to be fair, I just think it's important to bring that up. This is is a company that... They have a history. And and a present of (laughs) really shady stuff, so... And, you know, like you were saying, this... We want to... we, We can't decipher perfectly... Mm-hmm. What is going on here? And like Danny said, if there is um, Should be a pay gap due to gender inequality, mm-hmm. then it needs to be addressed. But we also can't assume that. So that's why this has been a big debacle because because of that. So the first the first thing is that just like I brought up earlier, there it comes down to 
viewers and I mean it doesn't come down to that only, but viewers it is, is, it is a factor. It, yes. Yeah, factor yes. of the equation. And so what that means is the more viewers, you know, that there's more revenue involved, whether it's due to, you know, sponsors or blah 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 blah. Right. Because you know well, I have to say that is the main point of it is advertising. Um yeah. and so that brings money into the equation and because there is such a different um, view count for both men, uh, FIFA World Cup and the women's FIFA World Cup, right? That that means that there's a lot less money. So the men, I think it's somewhere it said around four hundred million dollars was in the pocket for people for the winning team, or um, just for the, FIFA in general. The numbers I think for this current round had been about uh, they brought in. Four no six billion dollars, but only um seven percent of that had gone to the actual players, uh, compared to the uh, right four hundred. That's million? just Do like in general how much here, is going up. to the tournament, and for the women, I think it was around only thirty million, and and that is primarily due to the actual. You know, revenue and income due to mm-hmm. viewers. Part partially. I mean, to well, yeah, partially, to be but... fair, American viewers of U.S. women's uh, national team has gotten greater than the men's national team, but the men are still paid more. And this is because the European teams are way better and way more fun to watch. Go Manchester. Um, Which you, one? <laughs> Manchester, you. Okay. Uh, I know a little bit what I'm talking about. Manchester um, U. Come on. Manchester City. Man Man United. <laughs> the uh, the completely bought team. I don't know yeah. too much about that stuff. With all this money they're bringing in. Um, <laughs> but a, a big part is the, uh, uh, the international viewership because it is an international tournament. And there is a, a U.S. team that is paid a stipend by government of money for the something. It's all complicated. But overall... Um, the the men's World Cup. This is all according to an article by Forbes. Uh, the men's World Cup in Russia gener or it it brought in six billion dollars, and participating teams got four hundred million as far as pay goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, mean while the women's World Cup had been expected to earn one um, one hundred thirty. W- w- one million dollars, and the uh, uh, they doled out as as they put it. That's a quote, so I want to go ahead and quote that. They <laughs> gave the players thirty million dollars to participate in teams, and so uh, that stacks up to um, men are getting seven percent, and women are getting thirteen of the avenue r- the the r- revenue brought in, mm-hmm. and. S- so comparing it in that context, it isn't as cut and dry as what women are paid. people are making it off to be. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's definitely you know definitely a big factor. In sure, this, absolutely for sure. And but that doesn't mean that there isn't you know wiggle room for inequality in there. Right. But basically, it's just it comes down to you know. Really, I think you brought it up earlier. It's kind of pride, and oh yeah, they, yeah, you going on? Uh, there's a major problem of pride because at its core, you see, are right, this thing I've never un- understood about sports players. Sports players are play are paid millions and millions of dollars to play sport good. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoy sports. I turn it on, or no, I, I don't turn it on. Um, if it's on, I enjoy it, but I don't. I don't get into it as the oh no he's got it. he's been going to the the thing and he's been practicing in this and you know they got to trade this person do that stuff because yeah. it's it's it tends to be man throw ball good and I it's like okay cool neat do I think that that person needs seventy million dollars a year no I don't um, if oh, we're talking about pay inequality can I compare my bank stub to theirs but by doing that is just a me being kind of. Um, envious of their pay. And I have to acknowledge that that's there too. Um, the part that kind of in 
in my mind for Megan Rapinoe to tip her hand. It was after getting the a trophy, she started mouthing to the camera, oh, I deserve this. I deserve this. And that is... That's mm, problematic mm, mm. because... Y- you know, at its core, this is an in, an entertainment based industry. Right. If um if uh, nobody goes to these games, they're not going to get paid because no one cares. Uh, if it, it's entertainment based, it's it's kind of the, the same thing as people going to a gladiator battle in old days. They enjoy the gridiron, the battle between two uh, two opponents under a certain kind of set of terms and. And people are entertained because of it. Even go back to Rome, the whole idea of gladiator battles, it was entertainment and not kind of a feat of strength. Now, granted, people trained to be gladiators. They were strong. They were, were big. They are mighty trying to be the best that they can. Mm-hmm. But as it came down to it, this is entertainment-based. Right. And I think a good amount of time, sports tends to lose track of the fact that they're in entertainment, period. I think I said the same thing about uh, Colin Kaepernick and Nick, too, that he was a mediocre quarterback that didn't bring in a lot of money, so they fired him. It had nothing to do on his political stance, gender, race, or anything. It's that he was just an okay quarterback that cost them millions of dollars. So if that's, if, if that's all it is, sure, he's off the team. Um, b- but it's this idea that, oh, no, I'm – more special than every other person that tends to be problematic to people. And, and then because they're in places of influence, that's the place it gets uh, dicey because uh, they're making statements that don't have a lot of fact behind them. Right. And that's... Have I offended enough people in that sentence? Yeah. I, I think, as we commonly say on this show, please take a number. I mean, like, <laughs> even so, low. sure, like... Obviously, her attitude about this, I dislike. I'm just going to be straight up yeah. honest with you. I mean, like... Her attitude's been poor. It doesn't matter if it's a guy or girl. Right. I mean, like, that's just straight up annoying. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and no one likes anyone like that. And it's just because when you... I kind of wrote this down. Comparison is basically, you know, really bad. I mean, and that goes for any area of life. The... When you start to compare yourself to other people, mm-hmm. um, it just goes downhill because, like, you lose, you lose perspective. Mm-hmm. Is what happens. It just uproots you, right? Because when when they start to look, I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I mean, this goes a whole yeah, thing into fairness, and mm-hmm. should we be treated well, fairly? Uh, and it's an identity in a perfect thing too. world, yeah. If if in comparing my s- 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 if I need to compare me to another person to be quote good enough, that's the place it gets kind of problematic. I mean, all right, right. Personally, I w- wish I could teach as good as Chandler, J.D. Greer, all those guys. Those are my heroes. I l- they're great. I podcast all their stuff. Even J.T. Uh, um, English at Chan Ludler's church. He preached on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal. He's an amazing guy. If I ever I meet that guy, I'm going to fangirl up to him like, oh, you're JT. Oh my gosh. And it's not going to be good. And please, I hope this is not the one episode he listens to. I love you. What? Oh no. my gosh. Um, Just have, continue to your point. <laughs> have me on Knowing Faith. Um, so they, <laughs> but if I get to a point of going, I'm not as good as J.D. Greer. Therefore, I am not a... I I, I, I decrease in worth. Yeah. I think that is a point that J.D. Greer becomes an idol that I need to smash. Like, the... I wrote down this, um... This kind of sequence. I... Mm -hmm. I, Comparison brings competition, ultimately. And when the... Where there's competition... Uh, that forces you to evaluate the, the other person and yourself. And bringing your eyes on yourself is really not good for many reasons because that brings self-esteem mm-hmm. and and pride. You know, it's uh, it's really it's just not good. And then that leads to these expectations that can't really be met ultimately. And that leads to you just being 
you know, let down. That's mm-hmm. what it is. Mm-hmm. And that's why this whole sequence of things never really, you know, works out. Like you said, um, you know, you can compare yourself to those people, but what good is that going to do you when you could just go on the path that God has made for you? Right. And you're going to be way more satisfying. Right. Uh, because you're in his will. But for obviously, mm-hmm. obvious reasons, you know, I'm not claiming that these people are Christians, which doesn't mean they won't be one day, you know. Right. But I'm saying they're obviously not, you know, looking for where God's plan is sure. in their life. Well, and I mean, but sports doesn't this tend really to... really applies to anything. <laughs> true. I mean, but sports doesn't tend to attract that kind of person. These are people that they're... How dare you a monetary Tim Tebow across the face like worth. that. Worth. No, no, he got out of it just fine. I mean, he's doing all right because he understands that his value as a person isn't determined by the number in his bank account. Um, if if right. that is all a person is thinking, that if I don't have as much money as another person, then I'm not as good as, the, as them or I'm being yeah. mistreated. You know, sometimes that's just, it isn't the case. Uh, the idea of the a wage gap between the men and a women's team, do I think there, I mean, there is a, a gap in that they're paid different, but I don't think it's because of this this um, gender inequality thing. I don't think there are people claiming, well, their women just don't pay them as much. Um, it's, it, it's, this, it's, it, it's a combination of pride and comparison because they are still highly paid very talented yeah very talented persons it forces you to mm-hmm. lose perspective of that absolutely like you should be focusing on how much money you're making currently is actually mm-hmm. an insanely good amount you're right. well off right um in i mean when it comes to pay gap i'm not saying this is everyone's motive but there is right. greed in it sometimes and i think if you are a woman or if you are a you know a different race or nationality and you're evaluating you know this yourself to someone else do when it comes to pay i would say be careful because you need to tread lightly because sure you might be right and that's fine and i would say mm-hmm. you should you could you know, fight mm-hmm. for, you know, equal rights. Sure. Abs- which Absolutely. You know, and, but like you really have to, to not, you really have to make sure your perspective is in the right place. Though. Sure. That's sure. And super important. And Caleb and I are trying to tread carefully through yes. this and probably really <laughs> screwing it up, but whatever. Step in line. I've already gotten the two sound bites for you to pull. So, yeah. um, the, it, you know, as as both of us mentioned at the beginning, if there is inequality, it needs to be addressed because there isn't r- room to any kind of in of inequality in the body of Christ. Period, um, mm-hmm. and and that tends to be because God is so infinitely greater than all of us that all of us just tend to be on the same field. I mean, if God has all the money and r- riches in creation of all of time, then who cares if I have an extra 20 more than Caleb? That's not the idea. Uh, I'm still poor compared to God. I'm still nothing compared to God, and it's God in us that makes us great, and not anything I do or anything I bring to the table. Exactly. Um, and, and it. so I'm trying to not make light of the cases that there is actual in inequality, but, right. you know, there is an issue of pride in these cases because instead of trying to address the issue, they came out and demanded that it change. And I've, you know, in other press conferences, I've seen a few of them. I I, I had the same question each time. It's like, well, 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 I mean, who are you demanding this from? Right. Who, I mean, I'm not paying them anything. I didn't get a t-shirt, so who are they demanding this from? They're demanding it, but from who? Yeah. And it could have been a better stance to come out to ask questions, to actually engage this as a concept and as a topic, instead of being aggressive and just trying to say, I demand that this happens. Like, well, nobody's really behind it. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. You, You know, there isn't a group of... 
white males that all get together, smoke a cigar, and say, let's pay them less. Like, there's not, that's not <laughs> happening. A common conception, though. <laughs> I'm not invited to that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't like cigars, though. I just found out a few I months ago <laughs> that it's not a thing that you actually inhale. Yeah. I, I, no I do smoke cigars. I will let you guys know. I he am a heathen. sins. <laughs> No, but this yeah, you is don't Caleb's actually last episode in. on the podcast. We're, also, I'm looking I'm for fired. a new host. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's probably many people who could do better than me. <laughs> but moving on, I this Whoa, is no. Hold on, I had to parse that sentence because I thought that you said that people could do better than you, as in with podcast hosts for me anyway. No, you're a great co-host. Hey, uh, Gary, turn that off for a second. <laughs> Gary, this is really awkward. Can you, Gary, turn the camera back on? I don't want this. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> um, we... Gary, you're fired. <laughs> no, Gary, stay. Gary is my camera operator. I hired going. him. We can't. It's not a real bit. <laughs> what? Gary is real. What are you talking anyway, about? So, so, back to pride. <laughs> well, not even back to pride. I was gonna go more so so into. Well, Joby says. I'm sure this is a common saying. Who? The God's economy. Joby Martin, the pastor of 1122, um, my pastor, <laughs> he always like, says... Drop something over there. I'll just grab it. Here's this name. <laughs> um, but well, he always God, talks about... We're tagging about them in the comments. Let's God's get that economy. Clout. And obviously, God's the way God works is not the way this world works. So... I want to talk to us Christians now, basically. Absolutely. And that is uh, about, um, you know, God's economy. I really like that saying, so I'm going to keep on saying it. I'm just going to keep saying it, yes. <laughs> so God's economy, God's economy, God's economy. <laughs> he basically is talking about God's plan for equality is what I'm trying to get to. So equality in God's eyes is due to the body of Christ, and that we are all created for a unique purpose, not a unique purpose, but for a unique plan. Um, we all have the same purpose, to bring people to God, um, basically, and to glorify God, ultimately. I'm, I'm getting into deep theology, and I'm trying not to. Uh, but basically, how dare you? You know we have a camera. He's making faces. I'm not making... No, I'm thinking through what you said. It's fine. Keep yeah, going. No, I'm just, if I disagreed, I would have said that's, something. I no, lo- just love going. being on the podcast, but uh-huh. I hate it at the same time because you have to think about everything you say so intensely and in-depth, and it's it's tricky sometimes. Well, yeah. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, but, I'm, but that's part of this is that this is... Right. You know, these are, are, are things to think through because everybody contributes or it, you know, brings different things to the table. And as far as God's economy, uh, every, everybody's bringing in different parts to God's economy, but it all goes into the same pot. Exactly. Everything this, is towards the kingdom of God to build right. the kingdom of God. And I can't claim I'm any better than any other person or that I deserve a more honor than any other person right. because I don't. I. <laughs> I I actually don't. Yeah. So this kind of it also gets into the debate of like, you know, why can't uh you know, why why aren't women allowed to be pastors, which technically I believe in the Bible if it says that the husband says it's okay for the woman to speak in the church, then it's okay. Oh, are we really doing this? But uh, I was I'm, g- not, I'm not going into that. I Let's, was just going to cut this. That's actually just another, uh, another we, thing. But what I'm trying to, to go into today? is that, you know, what I believe is that God has a unique plan for everyone, like right. I said before, and that that means that we all don't need to be doing the same thing, and that's where the comparison comes in and just mm-hmm. blows up everything, and that's why it's mm-hmm. not good. Because I can look at Danny and be like, Oh, you know, well, while while I'm over here, you know, saying I'm using film, but what good does it do for me to be jealous about his teaching skills or, um, you know, his discernment? Thank you. <laughs> when <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> trying to butter him up. No, keep going. Keep say more. Say more. <laughs> uh, 
when I when God has given me my own unique set right. of skills, and when I actually focus on those skills right. and use them to God's glory, I am truly happy, and there's sure. joy in that. And I think that you could probably say the same for when you use the skills that God sure. has given you. I mean, to... It, to be fair, even about this podcast, Caleb and I have a very different skill set that tends to balance each other out if it's working proper, which, you know, 72 episodes in, we haven't not. found that balance yet. <laughs> but um, Caleb does approach things in a more artistic manner, and I'm way more pragmatic uh, about the entire thing. And that clashes. And that clash, it can be hard and difficult at some times. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> What episode sixty one is that? What we're talking about? <laughs> episode sixty one. Um, that clash can be difficult, but that challenge and push and pull between each other. If if one of us checks out, it affects the entire process. Mm-hmm. Um, because there is an aspect that the podcast has to be pragmatic, and there's also a, an aspect that it has to be artistic. Um, you know, this podcast can't be two and a half hours of just artistic poetry snapping garbage, I but don't it also do can't poetry. be... I know, but I'm making a point. <laughs> I know. Um, it also can't be a, 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 you know, point A, this, point B, this, and if you would see our notes, you would see that's oftentimes how I write it, which mm-hmm. is why I think he... I think that you open it sometimes and go, ah! So... <laughs> I I have I just have a feeling, no. but there's a balance there that just because both of us do different things doesn't mean we don't need each other. If anything, it means both of us need each other even more than we probably right. are willing to admit. And this goes into the beauty I'll of the body asleep, of Christ. I what they said. This goes into the beauty of the body of Christ. I mean, the way that God has created us to work for you know him is just beautiful the fact that and if you if you truly realize that that if you realize that what your skill set is and if you truly focus Mm -hmm. on that i do believe that you will get joy out of it not Mm -hmm. for don't do it for joy's sake but for the glorification of god is that a word i mean don't (laughs) yes but there is a thing about being tapped into that thing God created us to do that we just clicks. Yeah. There's something about it, it that, good. um, I mean, I got this out of teaching as a, uh, a student pastor teaching. There was something about it. It was stressful. It took up most of my time. I was very self-conscious about the whole process and I wouldn't have traded it for anything. And as, as I had to start teaching, in training interns how to do it, I hated giving it up every time. Mm-hmm. I had to do it, but still, I, I, th- there's something about that, that that it was my sweet spot that I got joy out of that because that's how God created me to do right. and express the person that God made me to be. Exactly. And, and, yes. and there is a joy that comes out of that. So I don't think it's wrong to pursue joy in in that I'm pursuing God uh, but there is th- uh, that kind of an aspect that no, if I'm chasing you'll God get the yeah. joy if you're straight up yeah. <laughs> right God is sovereign that's another thing right note that down but I mean it is that's where you know like I said comparison just destroys because absolutely it forces your perspective to go off of mm-hmm. the uh, the mindset of I'm I'm doing this for God mm-hmm. and to and that the fellow person mm-hmm. or fellow Christian is a ultimately like a teammate and a brother. Right. Um, and it forces you to think, oh, wait, no, I, I need to be better than them. Mm-hmm. I need to uh, make more money than them. I need to bring more people to Christ than them. And it's just like, what are you doing? Right. You know, because even if, you know, God only uses you to bring one person to Christ, you know, glory to God, because that's Absolutely. still amazing. That's one more person who gets to spend eternity with Jesus. Absolutely. Um, and it's Do it's the that thing mindset. that God called you to do and do it with everything that right. you have. If if the person that I am is, isn't is taking pride in anything I do, but instead of in, in God who, who created 
me towards that purpose, then comparison, if I'm positive that I'm being obedient to God, then comparison just steals that joy. Um, I think it was, uh, I, I, I wrote it down because comparison is just kind of an expression of pride, of I'm trying to find pride by comparing myself to others to be better than other people. Mm-hmm. But um, Proverbs 20, uh, 9, 23, it tells us that one's pride will bring him low, but the uh, one that is l- 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 lowly in spirit will obtain honor. And mm-hmm. and kind of the, the distinction is is in the posturing towards our our approach to things to the outsider. Even if I'm coming at it in 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 this attitude of I'm I'm doing this to give God glory, then there's going to be honor in that because I've tapped into a thing that's bigger than me. Mm-hmm. But if it's all about me, well, me can be destroyed and knocked down. Right. Um. And and. And if all I'm going to do is take pride and compare and try and be the best, at some point, I'm not going to be the best, and then who am I? I'm nobody. A pride nobody at every step. special. Well, no, because that's, that's I different. I know. We are nobody special <laughs> for reasons. Go back to the first episode. No, don't. I just heard it the other day. Don't go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, bad. <laughs> we'll just retape bad. that episode one day. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, if if the person that I am is defined by the things that I do, then at some point, if I can't do them, I am a nobody. But if the mm-hmm. person th- that I am is uh, defined by the, the God who is inside of me and I am in Him and, and who has uh, defeated all things, right? then I can't lose my identity or my worth. Yeah, and that's super... Obviously, it's it's not going to come quickly, and I think that we won't fully experience mm-hmm. that. I don't think it's ever going to happen, because me and Danny have both had, I'm sure I'm speaking you know, for you, but like times where it's super hard to have that mindset. Like when it comes to film, there's times where I'll look at mm-hmm. other like creations that people have made, and I'll just mm-hmm. compare it to myself. I'm like, oh, I'll never beat that guy. And I'm just terrible, blah, blah, blah. And you mm-hmm. can just mope about it. Or you can look or where the, you are and see how far yeah. God has brought you from, you know, being terrible at what you were first doing. <laughs> and then or, actually, you know, be content mm-hmm. and grow in that and keep on growing. And that's, it's super important. It just, when you get off track like that, it's just a waste of time. So just don't do it. Try or, to avoid it as much as possible. <laughs> Are we doing confession on this podcast? Sure. Okay. I was applying to jobs for like 18 months. And so um, if I applied to a job, I'd podcast a few of the sermons to figure out, you know, just who they are as a church. Mm-hmm. And and there's this issue of pride that kept coming up often. Hey, all right. I'm super not proud of this. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Um, there had been a, co- a church in particular that I know, and I'm not going to say their name, um, but they did email me back in 36 hours and say no. And I'm like, well, that's rude because churches don't operate that fast. So I'm like, you know what? Whatever. Uh, but I, I heard their podcast and just the entire time, God had to, you know, God smacked me around on this. But as I'm going through this, I thought I could preach this guy under the table. Now, this is called pride. Mm-hmm. That is because <laughs> I'll. All I had done in that case is gone, I can preach better than him. Right. I deserve <laughs> this job. So I pulled a Megan Rapineau. I deserve this. The pay inequality between him and I for this job. I can kick better than him. Yeah. No, I mean, that t- that was a real thing that I had to... Uh, I unsubbed from that podcast because it was just making me stumble uh, into things. Yeah. Um, and, and he said some other things, but that's not important. I. Oh, this is about my fault, and I'll tell you what he said after. Uh, but um, it was it was it was pride, and right. it was it was this idea of it was coming out of a place that I had felt slighted applying to jobs for eighteen months. That might not be good to say on this podcast. Whatever, it's all good. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, but the comparison of. I'm better than they are, therefore I deserve this job. It, it was a thing God had to break 
me of. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm about to step into a time that I can't really say I deserve the job or earned it and I'm stepping into it and I'm just gonna trust God through the whole process. I think right. we can tell that whole story in two weeks. Two weeks. And we definitely will because it's that's gonna a be fun a good story. Podcast. Um it's it's gonna episode be deeply personal and seventy four, seventy five it'll be um seventy four, I think. So, uh, but all that to say, a comparison up or down takes our eyes off God and puts it on some other thing to earn our self-worth, and that's dangerous. Yeah. And and that other guy, he was actually a really good preacher, and I felt really bad. He's really good. Yeah. Um, I mean, and if you haven't found what you think God has called you to do, then... Pray like crazy because I know that he'll mm-hmm. reveal it to you. And and I think the true ultimate key of when he mm-hmm. has, you know, shown that to you or if you've even like – I mean, basically, I feel like you know when you know. Right. Like the moment you do it, right. it's going to be something that uh, surpasses anything you've ever felt before. Right. And it's fantastic. And it's not – Due to anything, right? But God, and it might be in ministry, uh, or vocational ministry, and it might be in uh, you know just an everyday, like nine to five that you want to stay there for the rest of your life and preach the gospel to this you know this company you know mm-hmm. and all your coworkers. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter what it is, find it and pray about it, mm-hmm. and just don't ever compare yourself to anyone Mm -hmm. just you know it's sanctification between you and god Mm -hmm. and that's all you need to focus on so caleb what have you been able to do to kind of uh uh uh, try and safeguard against comparison and pride and entitlement because i'll just say i'm terrible at it but (laughs) i'm more terrible at it no I'm even more terrible at it than you are. I'm terrible plus one. <laughs> um, what are some I mean, things that I've done? Do you remember those arguments as a kid? I'm infinity plus one. You're like, dang it, you got me. You know, you're like, ah, oh, what are you gonna do, what? nerd? Um, oh, you never had the infinity plus one argument. No, <laughs> I've had. That's why you lost all the arguments. <laughs> uh, what are some things that I've done? Yeah, I would say. In in film, it's so like tricky because, <laughs> like, am I it's growing really, or getting jealous? <laughs> yeah. It's something that yeah. like you see every day, you right. know. Whether it's something bigger from Hollywood or you know another video that I'm mm-hmm. watching from, uh, you know another a coworker film, right. of just mine. Just say film. Oh, yeah. Or film <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, love just say film, film right, right. but. <laughs> Well, Film Riot's great because they actually teach you how to do it, and mm-hmm. it's fantastic. Right. They're fantastic. I, even if you don't like film, just watch them, all right, because they're just great. Not an ad. Not an ad. But we can be if they want to. <laughs> um, but What's our things, sellout price? Like 20 bucks? Is that where we are? <laughs> mm, I'll say about nine bucks. <laughs> yeah, nine. Yeah. Uh, so he gets nine, I get 11. But some things that I've done that I think help a lot are just to stay I mean it's easy to say but like stay humble and keep your mouth shut <laughs> like especially in the beginning uh-huh. of what yeah. you're doing uh, yeah like for me it was just learning oh yeah that was um, the internship right or like uh, the internship apprenticeship. I yeah apprenticeship yeah. oh my gosh I am embarrassed I like went in thinking I was like, oh yeah I'm gonna I'm going to help these people. Okay, I knew nothing, all right? Right. right. I'd done an internship at, like, a a more corporate place, and it wasn't really in, like, the actual film. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. the processes of uh, Mm -hmm. film and corporate video are very, very different for many different reasons. But I went in thinking I was hot stuff, and oh, boy, was I wrong. And thank God he revealed that to me very quickly. And it was embarrassing for me, very much so. But what I did was just, I, you know, kept my mouth shut and mm-hmm. learned. Right. And, you know, keep your head down. Right. And do everything that they ask and mm-hmm. just learn as much as you can. Also, and that if had it, been if an intentional learning, choice that you had to make going in to be like, okay, 
I'm here to learn and grow. Right. I am not here as the director of the film department <laughs> no. for a multi-million well, dollar corporation. I <laughs> like, wasn't that yeah. that Well, yeah, but it was <laughs> it's it's that type of a yeah. I'm here exactly. to grow and to contribute and, and at the grow. time this was like me deciding whether or not I even felt called into like film as a ministry. And so it was even that like just listening, praying, growing. And I'm not saying that's what, you know, it's going to be for your case, but that was what it was for me. And it was like, I just had to do that. And and then God brought mm-hmm. me on to a different place, but it was like, yeah. it's it was all God through that whole right. process. Because I know I could have gotten super, super cocky and like, it just wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have learned as much. And I wouldn't have cocky been. Cocky in film? No. I know, right? When, what? when has that shown up in the past week? <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's, I'm not saying that's what it's going to be for you, but it's super important to, I'd say the generalization of that is mm-hmm. just to be humble. Yeah. And like, yeah. That's I've, I found, um, I mean, I always see any all right, anytime I say this, I always feel as if I'm backdoor bragging. I'm not. This is how I actually approach things. I have a good educational background. I have all that, sure. I can hold my own in a conversation. I still might be an idiot. And that's kind of the way I try and go into conversations. It's like I could be a dumb. And I mm. <laughs> it's it's understanding that I mean, I've I've studied scripture, I've studied the Bible and all that. Compared to the stuff God knows, I have no idea. I don't know what I'm doing compared to God. So just the, if if I have to compare to anybody, compare to God, just to stay humble a bit and be just like, okay. Well, I think that's super important. God has this, and I don't, nor do I have to. That's the other thing. Oh, yeah. I don't have to have it. Because God has it. Yeah, and that's even more so if God, Yeah, so if God has it and God says, like, hey, pick up big thing, then I can pick up big thing, mm-hmm. and that's kind of it. But even, um, I mean, it's, it's kind of a fun p- progression that uh, in about a decade and a half, you'll be able to go through this and say, yeah, no, I see that. Um, people that are just starting to get into, like, Bible colleges and seminaries, they they tend to feel as if they um, have something to prove and that their one class on introduction to theology has made them smarter than everybody. But the the most kind of a humble person I know, I don't know if I've told this story, my first class in seminary, I almost dropped out the first class <laughs> um, because at some point I stared at this class going like, oh, I shouldn't be here. I, I'm in the wrong building. I should not be in this at all yeah. because a guy gets up there Walter Kaiser, he's he's a brilliant man. He he was my first professor, but I had no idea who anybody is. Um, and I go in there, and he's just this sweet old man. And I just thought, sweet yeah. old man, cool. He doesn't bring a notes. He's talking on the Pentateuch. Oh, sorry, the first five books of the Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, and he goes over to the board, and he starts jotting it down in Hebrew on the on the board. Keep in mind, no notes. He didn't bring anything. Yeah. He just got up and started speaking and he goes da 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 in Hebrew and then he stops and says, I'm sorry, it's five hundred course people haven't taken Greek or Hebrew. He erases it, translates it in his head, puts it in English on the, the board, and I'm just like, I have to go. <laughs> I so uh I I'm not in the right building. <laughs> later found out that Although, like, prior to that class, I was like, I'm in seminary, I'm going to be the best, I'm going to do this and this. I later found out that that guy's also the president of the institution, but I found that out after I got to go to lunch with Mm -hmm. him, and he asked about my educational background, and I said psychology, and we started talking about the animal psychology class I took, and then I Googled him after I got home, and I was like, I'm a dumb I'm a big dumb because uh, this is the Old Testament scholar that people quote and say, but he's Dr. Kaiser. So I listened to him and I was like, I had a burrito with that man. What am I doing? Yeah. (laughs) So I just, but as far as people that taught me how to be humble is him because if anybody had earned uh, the ability to 
uh, make strong statements. It's him. Right. And he just didn't really care about some of the debates. There was a debate that he said, okay. Good on him. I feel it's this, but here, I'll make you a deal. If we get to heaven and it's uh, this, uh, the thing that I think it is, I'm going to turn, I'm going to stare over. And I'm just going to touch touch my nose and go, hmm. But if it's the thing that you think it is, then turn, stare over at, stare over at me, and, and just touch your nose and go, hmm. And that was the end of the debate. It's like, this doesn't matter, and I don't care. Yeah. I'm like, that's humility there. Because he could have just squashed us immediately, and instead he chose, it's like, eh, they're new. Yeah. I love that man. It's cool. So it's it's just kind of a matter of don't take yourself so seriously. Oh yeah, you know that's a good way to put it. Yeah, don't take yourself so seriously. Seriously, it's not that big of a deal. (laughs) Yeah. Um, man, yeah, that's super super good. Mm -hmm. I liked where this one. This is. I mean, it's just Mm -hmm. don't compare yourself to other people. Mm -hmm. It's not good. Mm -hmm. Find God's plan for your life if you haven't. Because it's going to lead to awesomeness. Right. And keep on listening to this podcast. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to compare this to anything, but if you enjoyed this episode and w- wanted to give it five stars on a YouTube or a thumbs... Nope, five stars on iTunes or a thumbs up on a YouTube, Yeah. go ahead. Feel... Do it. Welcome to. Right. If you want to give it a thumbs down, I mean, please don't. Just... <laughs> It's my yeah. first day. I'm doing my best. Good, good replies only. Um, <laughs> you can thumbs up. It's really hard to ask people to like thumbs up the podcast after we just talked about pride and comparison. Do whatever you want. Yeah. But if you want to ask us questions, Caleb, where can they find us? You can go to the gospeloutpost.com slash nobody special, and at the bottom of the page, there is a little forum where you can type in your question or just say hello. Make and our day. Say hello. Yeah. Literally. You think we're joking. We're really not. It's <laughs> but quite pathetic. You can also go on Instagram and Facebook and direct or private message us there. Mm-hmm. And a nobody special we, podcast. Or on yes. Twitter, um, if, if they go that to Twitter... Right it's possible to go to the top of the web page right on Twitter and type in Facebook instead because we don't have a Twitter. Yes. We should yes. get a Twitter. That you, You're in charge of that. If we but do. who can I say? Sn- well, I'm already saying, no, I'm not saying snarky stuff on the, here's <laughs> the deal. Of the Gospel Outpost, the nobody special stuff, I can actually go and say snarky stuff on because that's kind of our bit here. Uh, this Nobody's is- special. What? Have you been doing that with the account? John uh, John Chris did n- n- not answer if he w- wanted to come to St. Augustine to the alligator farm that nobody special invited him to, which, by the way, was super good because I was super broke at the time and I did not have the money to buy his ticket to there. Oh, my gosh. Very glad he didn't. But Why John Chris, the offer is always open. John Chris, John Chris, we've been good to you. We really have. <laughs> yeah. No Actually, way. no. I mean... I love John Chris, but... Oh, no, he's funny, yeah. We're getting off track. Uh, thegospeloutpost.com slash nobody special for questions, comments, Already concerns, and favorite that, colors, Facebook, Instagram, I whatever. said it better than you, too. You really did. I said it way better than you. Yeah. I'm so great at saying where oh, they ask questions. how great are you? Oh, if you're going to start the joke, you got to finish it. Infinity plus one. Oh. oh, yeah, well, I... Am great U three thousand. I don't know. Uh, don't ever um, use that. That is the worst thing to come out of Endgame. Whoa! Excuse me. That's a form of love. Yeah, but we don't need it. We're at the end. I know. Um, so Caleb, I think we can ramble on for ten more minutes. <laughs> yeah. But even I stopped listening now. So uh, yeah. Caleb, I think that's going to do it for us today. So uh, I'm Danny. I'm going to turn off your phone now, and I'm Caleb. <laughs> well, no, that was my computer. Uh, oh, and that. we, sorry, I'm Danny. <laughs> and I'm Caleb. And we are Nobody, Nobody Special. special.